Hello everyone. In this problem, we're told that the Earth is being treated like a sphere. In reality, it's not a perfect sphere, but we're going to pretend it is for the purpose of this problem. The first part of the problem asks us to find the circumference of the Earth given its radius. And we're told that the Earth's radius, or R sub E, is approximately 6.37 times 10 to the power of 6 meters. Now an important thing to note about this problem is that the first part of the problem asks for the circumference in kilometers, not meters. In fact, if you read ahead a little bit, you'll notice that all three parts of the problem ask for us to give an answer that is kilometer based. So to save us some time, the first thing I'm going to do, before I even start on part A specifically, is take this radius we've been given and convert it into a radius in kilometers. Now the process of performing a unit conversion can be pretty confusing if you're not used to it. But the strategy I personally go with that helps me understand it is first I make note of what the conversion actually is. So in this case, we're given a value in meters and we want to convert it into kilometers. So let's make a note of how meters and kilometers relate to one another. Note that the word kilometer is basically just the word meter but with a kilo prefix above it that means thousand. So one kilometer is just equal to one thousand meters. So my personal favorite way to do unit conversions is to perform what's called a chain link conversion, which is where we take our original value, the value that we're trying to convert, and multiply it by the conversion factor, by its ratio, as a fraction. So we've got the original radius, and I'm going to multiply it by a fraction. And of course, there are two sides to every fraction. There's top and bottom. And on one side, I'm going to put the one kilometer. And on the other side, I'm going to put the 1,000 meters. And the way that you know which side to put which thing in is to think about how the units will cancel out. Remember that when we have any value and divide it by itself, we could say that those two values cancel out because anything divided by itself is just one. Aside from some special cases, anyway. In the case of this problem, we know that we're starting out with units of meters, so we want to put something in the denominator that will cancel out with the meters and leave us with a kilometer in the numerator remaining. So that means that we want to put one kilometer in the top of the conversion ratio and a thousand meters in the bottom because if we do it this way then we can see that the meters will cancel out because we've got one meter in an effective numerator and another meter unit in the denominator so those would disappear and we're only left with what's on top the kilometer so this if we put this into a calculator this gives us another ratio as 6.37 times 10 to the power of 3 kilometers. Notice that because all we did was take our original value and divide it by a thousand, all that's really changed is that the exponent on this 10 has changed from a 6 to a 3. That exponent has basically just subtracted 3 from it, which makes sense because we divided it by a value that has 3 zeros. So now that we've got the radius in a value in units that is most convenient for us, let's start with the actual problem itself. Part A asks for us to find the circumference of the Earth given this radius. Now again, if you know the right formulas, then all three parts of this problem can be one step each. For circumference, if we have the circumference of a circle or sphere, then the formula for that circumference formula for the circumference of a circle or sphere is equal to 2 pi multiplied by the radius of the circumference or sphere. So all we need to do is put into a calculator 2 pi multiplied by 6.37 times 10 to the power of 3 kilometers. If we put this into a calculator, then we find a circumference of about 4.00 
times 10 to the power of 4 kilometers. And so that is our answer for part A, that is the circumference. The second part of the problem, part B, asks for the surface area of the Earth. So again, there's a formula we can use for this. If we have a sphere and we know its radius, then the surface area of that sphere is equal to 4 pi multiplied by the square of the radius. So we're just going to plug in for the radius the value that we've got, 6.37 times 10 to the power of 3 kilometers. And don't forget to square it, that's very important. If we put this into a calculator, then we find that the surface area is about 5.10 times 10 to the power of 8 squared kilometers. And that is the surface area, so that is the answer for part B. Finally, part C asks us for the volume of the sphere. So the formula for the volume of a sphere, based on its radius, is 4 pi divided by 3, all multiplied the cube of that radius. So we're just going to do 4 pi over 3, multiplied by the cube of 6.37, times 10 to the power of 3 kilometers, and that whole radius is cubed. If we put this into a calculator, then we find a volume of about 1.08 times 10 to the power of 12 cubic kilometers. And again, don't forget to include the exponent, because that's very important to defining what the units are. And so, that is our volume, that's the volume of this approximated Earth, and so that's the answer for part C. And that is the answer for all three parts of the problem. And that's it for this problem. I hope this video helped you out. If it did, please consider subscribing, as that'll help me out in making more videos like this. If you have any requests for future videos, or questions about this one, please leave a comment down below, and I'll do my best to help you out as best as I can. That's all for now, and I hope you all have a lovely day. Bye-bye.